Did you ever have the feeling your priorities were messed up? Get a good job, make your parents proud, do something to earn respect and money, be successful. That's what I thought, that's what I believed in. I thought that was my passion, so that's what was what I did. But then at some point I had the feeling I need to break out of it. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something just for myself, and I wanted to get out of the city. And don't ask me why, but I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to surf. I wanted to learn how to surf. So I was sitting together with my friends and talked to them, and they told me that Portugal has beautiful surf spots. There were um, great people who travel there. So I knew I wanted to go to Portugal, so I asked my friend whether she wanted to join me, and she did. So together we did some research, and we tried to find out what's the best place to go to. So we found this one surf camp at the Algarve in Portugal, which had amazing reviews. All the people who've been there seem to have had the most amazing time of their life. So we didn't hesitate very long, and we booked it. And a few weeks later, the adventure began. So the first time I got there, I did not know what to expect. I had no clue. So we walked into the house the first night, and I was actually, I felt kind of awkward. There were so many people sitting there. And I walked into the living room, and there were three huge couches with people laying on them watching surf competitions. And I continued, I walked outside, and there was a huge, beautiful outdoor area. There was a huge dining table, people were having dinner, a fireplace where people were chatting, a huge pool and a volleyball court, everything you could think of. But then I asked myself, how do I fit in? So there were about 30 people, as well as all the instructors and the people who took care of the house. They all had different backgrounds, and they came from different places. So we had instructors from South Africa, from the UK, there was a chef from the Netherlands who cooked the most amazing meals, and then all the people who stayed there, from Australia, Poland, Austria. But they had one thing in common. They were all there to surf. So for the past few years, I've been hosting events which gave people the opportunity to be creative and innovative in a similar environment that I've just described to you. People came from all different backgrounds. They do different jobs and have different expertise. We had designers coming, we had developers, business experts. But they all had one thing in common. They were there to have a great, fun weekend, be inspired and create software prototypes. So do surfing and software have anything in common? Maybe, possibly, but not really. I would say it's more about the people, about the different perspectives, and finding a common ground together. So the first day at the beach, I was a bit terrified. <laughs> so I was sitting at the beach with my instructor and with the beginner group, which I was in, and I wanted to understand what I got myself into. So I heard a lot about theory, about the ocean and about surfing. So I did feel kind of secure when I first walked into the water. It's basically all about you, your surfboard, and the water. So I took my board and I walked in. And what then happens is kind of different than what you hear in theory. It's experiencing the ocean for the first time. So I went into the water, and the first challenge I was facing was getting out there. I knew I had to be somewhere in the back where the waves are, so how do I get there? You paddle and paddle, and then the wave pushes you back, and you have to start all over again. And by the time you get out there, you're totally exhausted, and your arms hurt from paddling. The next step, you turn around, and you start observing the waves coming towards you. And you feel kind of clueless because you don't know which one to take. So how much strength are these waves going to build up by the time they hit me? 
I don't know. So the only thing I could do is try it out and see what happens. And what you then experience is getting smashed by the waves for the first time. It hits you, and I would maybe think of being in a washing machine. The wave hits you, you fall off your board, and it's much more that you, than you can see on the surface. You get swirled around by the waves multiple times, and at some, t some point, which feels like minutes, your head pops back up. And then you ask yourself, do you really want to do that again? And you're scared, because it's really scary to be underwater for such a long time. And on the other hand, you feel pretty frustrated, because you've just failed. And who really enjoys not being naturally good at something? So at night, we walked back to the house, we were sitting at the fireplace, having a drink, enjoying the fire, listening to music, and we talked about our experience and what, we, what we've just discovered. And it was a really good feeling, not being alone, because everyone else had similar experiences, that it's hard and that you fail. And then in the next moment, we went back again with our coach and the beginner group, and we talked about it, and he tried to explain what's really important about surfing. And a lot is actually about getting a feeling for the waves, for the water, knowing about the timing. Because if you know the timing and you can kind of read those waves, you also know that you're not going to get smashed by them. But what was most surprisingly to me, what I didn't expect that he said to me is, you need to enjoy getting smashed by the waves, because it's part of it. On the one hand, these waves can lift you up and give you the best ride of your life, which, believe me, is an amazing feeling. But on the other hand, they can push you down underwater and you feel scared. But it's about failing and learning from that failure. And if you can't enjoy that part, you will just be frustrated, you get unmotivated, and you will probably have no fun at all, or maybe even quit surfing after the first day. So coming back to my business challenge, trying to solve a problem at a geeky innovation event, you do basically exactly the same thing. You want to understand the problem that you're dealing with. So how do you do that? You are in a team with lots of different people, and that's your core strength. Because all these different people bring different perspectives on the table. So if I would ask, every one of you in this room to draw, a, uh, to draw a tree, I will probably get 200 different pictures, because you all have different things in your mind, different images. So you need to bring that together. Look at the problem, exchange what you think about it, and create that common understanding. And then in the next step, you want to integrate the user. You want to really verify if the problem that you have in front of you is the real problem you have to solve. Because a lot of time, that's not the case. I didn't expect that I have to enjoy getting smashed by the waves, so I just figured that out after experiencing it. So experience it. And then be a pirate. Imagining going on a big boat, going to an island, and you want to find a big treasure box, and then you want to bring it back to your family and share all the treasures. That's what you want to do. So you want to go out of the building, you want to discover, explore, talk to your end user, and really figure out what their problems are. You want to try to develop empathy for them. So put yourself in the same shoes they're in. Experience what they experience, and get a feeling for it. Because that's the only way we really find out the useful and unexpected needs that you're looking for. And once you're back, you want to exchange that again with the team, because everyone had a different experience on their boat ride. So come back together, exchange those experiences, bring yourself on the same level of knowledge again. And then you get a clear understanding for what your insights are, what you're trying to solve, who your user is, and who you want to design something for. So once you've gone to that problem stage, you developed empathy for your end user, and you know what you have to solve. 
it's time to apply what you've discovered. So for me, that meant hang loose. The next time a wave smashed me really hard, I just relaxed, because I knew it'll swirl me around, but it'll also bring me back up. And I tried not to be scared about it. So the time I came back up, I tried to smile and laugh about it and enjoy it. Are we still having fun? That was the question our instructor asked us multiple times a day. He said that's the most important thing about surfing, about learning something new. You need to have fun and you need to enjoy every part of it because everything else will come by itself at some point. It's about experience. So then, in the next step, he would help us get a better feeling for the waves and about the timing. So he pushed us into our first waves, which is a great feeling, getting accelerated by the waves, by the power, and having your first ride. And then you start doing it yourself, catching waves, starting the pop-up, starting to turn, and you get better, and you constantly iterate. So classic is always doing the Titanic when you're on the board, but you're a surfer, so do that, apply that. Look how the others do it. So it's a constant iterative process. And once you get good at it and comfortable in the white water, that's the beginner water in the front, you start moving out in the back to the green waves, the real ones. So the same thing, again, applies to the business challenge. Once we know what we're dealing with, once we know whom we're designing for, we want to start thinking about solutions. And again, we want to do that in a team. We want to take advantage of the strength, of the power of the multidisciplinary team that we're working with. Everyone will tackle a problem differently, will think about solutions differently. So if you bring that together, if you brainstorm together, you can build on top of these ideas and create even better ideas. So out of all of these ideas that you come up with, you want to select one that's maybe the most promising one or the most desirable one or maybe the craziest one. And then you want to start develop that idea further. You want to try to make it tangible because your goal is to go back to your end user and test it. You want to get feedback. And what's a better thing to test it, to give something tangible in somebody's hands, other than just using your words, trying to explain the functionality and logic of your idea? If you build something and somebody holds that in their hand, they can experience it. And just by observing, you know what works and what doesn't work. And this way, you can go back, take all the feedback that you got from the testing and improve your product. You can iterate on it, include that feedback. So developing new software products means tons of iterations. It means including your user in the process and always go back generate feedback. And that's the only way how you can improve your product. And in, if in the end your user falls in love with your product, you achieved exactly what you were aiming for. So coming back to my priorities, I told you at the beginning that I knew what they were, but that's essentially not true. My surf trip revealed to me personally what I like, what I enjoy about my my life, and that's actually working with people in challenging environment and taking advantage of the powerful combination of harmony, which in this case was between myself, the water, and the board. But what it also revealed, or what I figured out, is that the same thing applies to my job, what I like about my job and what I like doing and love. And being successful in this case means establishing harmony when working with people, projects, and processes. So it's about these three things, and I want to dive a little bit deeper into that, because creating that harmony in the context of business is more challenging than maybe doing surfing. 
So why is that, or why do you have to be more careful about how you do things? So let me talk a little bit more about the people. So I told you that having different people in one room, different perspectives, is the biggest advantage. And it still is, and it also applies to the business. But it's, on the other hand, the most challenging part of it, and it can cause many conflicts. So imagine you work in a team with developers, designers, business strategists, and lawyers, maybe, and they come all from different countries. Some of these people are shy, and they can't speak up for themselves. Others are always really loud and want to lead the project, and they know everything. And then you have the different cultural backgrounds, people from different countries speaking different languages, which can cause many misunderstandings or misinterpretations. There are very, a lot of little things that can cause bad team harmony and people being frustrated. So the most important thing is to be aware of that and always invest in team building. Enable the people in your team the same way. And the most important thing, focus on what you all have in common. Creating amazing, user-friendly, creative software products. And have fun together. Do something other than just working. Grab a beer after work, or maybe start with a little warm-up game before you um, do your project work. The biggest challenges in regards to the project itself, when you apply a user-centric process, like design thinking, for example, is especially, um, especially in big companies where you have standard procedures and a specific culture, Imagine you want to set KPIs, goals, on the outcome of the project. How do you want to do that when you have a user-centric approach where you don't know the outcome at the beginning? So it's important that you have the management on board. Be transparent about what you do and how you do it. And the process itself is pretty time-consuming because you do integrate the user. You go back and forth, you want to talk to him, you want to integrate feedback, and you do tons and tons of iteration. Feedback uh, failure needs to be a good thing. It needs to be implemented in the company culture, because only if you fail, you can learn. So to come to a conclusion, for me personally, what I've discovered because of my surf trip on the one hand, but on the other hand, because I love my job and I love doing, and I saw these connections. Um, people, allowing people to collaborate together and working on projects that they really believe in, integrating the user and applying a user-centric approach, really creates that common ground of harmony, but it also breaks silos in big companies which I found pretty inspirational. So what is your surf trip for you guys? Thank you.